All right, guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we're going to talk about Keon Pearson and his chances of actually cracking the top six at the Mr. Olympia, or should I say his potential placing at this show. Keon Pearson did not compete last year at the Mr. Olympia. However, he placed fourth at the Arnold Classic, beating guys like Wesley Vissers, then losing to George Peterson, Steve Lorius, and Courage Opara. Some people had him beating Courage, but I wasn't one of them. I thought Courage looked better. He had better legs, his chest was fuller, and conditioning was also on Courage's side. He was harder. Maybe because Courage wasn't natural, right? Even though he has premium genetics, probably ideal classic physique genetics, small waist, dominant arms, insanely good vacuum, perfect V taper, he is a little bit shorter and that can hurt him a little. He has very, very good genetics for this class. He still wasn't able to beat these three guys at the Arnold Classic. And then less than three months after this show, he came at the New York Pro, looking much better, much, much harder, bigger. He improved so many body parts and he came in better conditioning, brought an overall better package in here. Officially stated he's not natural anymore even though he probably never was. But now, at least we are sure he is not natty anymore and we can expect him to do much better at the Mr. Olympia, seeing what kind of progress he was able to make in less than three months. Less than three months, guys. And with his genetics, with his perfect structure, he can do very good at the Mr. Olympia. And aside from George Peterson, Steve Lorius and Courage Opara, there is a lot of other guys at the Mr. Olympia who placed very highly, who are actually going to improve and come better at this year's Mr. Olympia. And in order for Keon to crack the top six or top three or to win it, as some people expect, he would have to beat some really, really good bodybuilders or classic physique competitors. And in order to do that, he definitely does have to improve. But he does have time. And we saw what he can do in three months. So, Mr. Olympia is the most important competition in the world. I am sure that he's going to improve much more. We'll see what package he has to bring. But now let's compare him to the rest of the lineup. Let's see who can actually he beat from the top six or the top ten at the Mr. Olympia. So, Kion lost to Courage Opara, but Courage Opara was actually 10th place at the Mr. Olympia. So, if things stay the same, Kion wouldn't even crack the top 10. But that's definitely not the case anymore. With his New York Pro shape, he would definitely beat Courage. But would he be able to beat Steve Lorius? That would be a battle. That would be a battle I would like to watch. And at this 2019 Arnold Classic, I don't think he was even close to Steve. Steve has much better muscle maturity. He has more thickness to his physique. He has height on him. And uh, basically, he was bigger. He was fuller. He looked just better, more conditioned as well. But that was all before Keon's big transformation. At this New York Pro, he brought an amazing version, much fuller, much more conditioned, better, overall better physique. And if you compare them here, you can see that Keon's legs are looking bigger now, and uh, his lats are lower attached. I would still say that Steve has that muscle maturity on him and the height as well, but it's very close, it's very close. But we'll see, we'll see in a couple of months. Anyways, both of these guys made crazy transformations this year. And until Mr. Olympia, I'm pretty sure both of these guys will improve. And the chances of them both cracking the top six are very big. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. However, if you take a look at George Peterson on the right, would Keon be able to beat him? And he placed third at the Mr. Olympia last year, so that's a very high place. I guess George's placing will depend on the judging criteria. If the judging criteria really changes, and if the judges actually start looking for classic lines, for classic physiques, actually, if they stop looking at shredded glutes, muscle maturity, thickness of the muscles, density, and whatever they're looking for in the open category, if they start judging a little bit differently, George's placing will go down, and Keon's placing will go up. We saw the similar thing at the New York Pro. Alex Cambronero was bigger, fuller, better conditioned than Keon, and still he lost, simply because of the classical shape of Keon. He won with his structure, with his shape, that's the fact. 
Kion did have bigger and fuller legs, but Alex had bigger arms, better conditioning and also much better chest. Kion's chest was lagging behind. If this was bodybuilding competition, I believe Alex would win. But once again, Kion won because of his classical lines. So that sends a message, right? But if that was only a one-time thing, if they don't really change anything, George Peterson will probably beat Kion because he's very dense, his muscle is matured, he looks more conditioned than most of the open guys and he has a lot of muscle on his frame, he's just thicker than everybody else pretty much. So in all likeliness, Kion will not beat George Peterson. I also think that the chances of Kion beating Brion, it rhymes actually, are very, very slim because Brion is not the number one for no reason. He has incredible details all over his physique. The muscle maturity is on top, on point. He has all the muscles necessary. The symmetry is there, the proportions are there. He maybe doesn't have the best lines, the best classical structure, but it's not bad. It's not ugly like George Peterson's. So unless he significantly improves, he will not beat Brion. But maybe in a couple of years, maybe in like two years, it's very possible. What about Chris Bumstead though? Well, Chris is my favorite classic physique guy, he has an amazing structure, I love his shape so much, he is perfect for classic physique. However, his arms are horrible, his biceps insertions are so bad that he will never be able to have great biceps. And that's strong point of Kion, Kion's biceps are amazing and overall arms, but Kion's chest is very very weak. Kion will be able, I am sure that he will be able to improve his chest a lot. Chris will not be able to do that, so I believe in a couple of years Kion will be able to beat Chris, but not this year though. This year Chris is still far ahead. His muscle maturity is on another level and he has an amazing structure, conditioning is really really good, however his back is weak, Kion improved his back a lot, so Kion will be able to beat him in that area and also with arms, but overall I think Chris will be much better than him this year. But in a couple of years I'm pretty sure that Kion will take this guy easily, even though he's much shorter. And then we come to this guy, Henry Pierre Anno, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He cracked the top four. He was fourth after George Peterson and will Kion be able to beat him? This guy is known for his conditioning, he's very, very conditioned and he's very tall, he has nice muscle bellies and I believe it's going to be tight between these two guys. Kion though looks thicker because he's shorter probably, his legs look much more massive, however, unless Kion brings better conditioning, even better conditioning, he will probably not beat Henry. But we'll see what happens. Now we come to Arashrag Bar, who was actually second place at the 2016 Classic Physique Mr. Olympia, the first, the original one. Back then the judging criteria wasn't really set in place, so the winner was Danny Hester. It was a very controversial win, this guy was not classic at all. He was the best bodybuilder on that stage, he had the best back and the best conditioning, but not much more than that. He wasn't classical at all. And last year in 2018 he placed 12th, so he's not a threat to Kion, I don't think so. So let's go back to Arash Ragbar, who took 5th place at the Mr. Olympia 2018. He was very watery. If he repeats this shape, if he comes watery again, out of shape, he'll probably be lower than Kion. But in 2018 at the Arnold Classic, where Brion won and Arash placed 2nd, Arash was in really great conditioning, so if he can combine 2018 Mr. Olympia fullness and 2018 Arnold Classic conditioning, I believe that he will be higher than 5th place. I believe that he can crack the top 3, I believe that he can be under Brion and Chris. So that's my take on it, if he brings great conditioning he will be higher than Kion, if not, Kion can actually beat him. So we'll see what happens, anyways Arash is an amazing personality, you can listen to his videos on YouTube or Instagram, I watched some of his videos numerous times, even though I pretty much know all that he has to say, he kind of rationalizes everything and he reminds me of some things that I need to continue doing right, so if you want to listen to him, you can listen to him on his YouTube channel or his Instagram account, he is really an amazing personality. And so we come to the 6th place, this guy cracked the top 6 and he beat Steve Lorias, he beat Regan Grimes, he beat Terence Ruffin, Courage Opara, David Hoffman, Danny Hester, Stanimal, Robert Timms, Wesley Vissers, Dwayne Wilson and so on, a bunch of other guys. 
And I believe that Kion will beat him and all these other guys. So in my opinion, Kion is very, very likely to crack that top 6 if he repeats this shape or even improves. So let's wait, let's see what happens. I will make probably a couple of more prediction videos depending on how things turn out, what happens with other contenders, so we'll see in a couple of months. Anyways, thank you very much guys for watching. If you agree with me, tell me why do you agree, tell me what is your take on this. But don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. All the best guys, bye bye.